Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. I'm here in downtown Nashville with my buddy Retrol, who is behind the camera right now. And we are basically gonna walk around Nashville for a bit and then head up to Novo Guitars, their new showroom in Nashville. And we're just gonna have a conversation about our individual experiences as guitar players making a living on YouTube and through video work. And yeah, we're just gonna talk about the various ways in which you can make a living through music because as you all probably know by now, it's, it's hard to make a living in music from doing the one thing, so we all have to sort of branch out and find uh, various sources of income. So we're just going to have a conversation about that whilst walking through beautiful downtown Nashville. Okay, I'm trying to do a little Instagram story video right now. This is take two. I'm going to get out this time. Hey guys, I'm in downtown Nashville with my buddy Rich Shul, who is a fellow YouTube guitar vlogger. Fuck this, right? <laughs> YouTube, well, YouTube musician. Just say YouTube musician. YouTube musician. Yeah. Okay. I need you here. Hey guys, I'm in downtown Nashville with my buddy Rhett Schill, who is a fellow YouTube musician. We're going to have a conversation and capture it on Rhett's camera about uh, our careers in music. If you have any questions for us that you'd like us to talk about, then ask away. There you go. Third time's a charm. Yeah. Right. This is the part of YouTubing that you don't always get to see, which is how many different takes you have to go through to get something good and usable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Dude, so what made you decide to start a YouTube channel? Like, I'm sure you've talked about your guitar playing in the past and like why you started playing guitar, but why did you decide to take that onto YouTube? Okay, so I have had my YouTube channel for about 10 years now. Uh, and in the beginning, that was really just for fun when I was, you know, like 12 years old, I'd upload, I don't know, Bring Me The Horizon covers, <laughs> <laughs> like, every few months. Right. Uh, but then, in about halfway through 2017, that was when I graduated. I'd just completed a four-year degree in music, and I had some income performing on the weekends with a wedding band, uh, which I still do, but that was really the only sort of sort of source of income that I had at that time and what I had just done for my final project at uni was I would created an online guitar course I wanted to make something that I could use to make to generate income as a musician once I had graduated so when I was making that I knew that I wanted to focus more on creating YouTube content that would attract people to that course and you know, create a, a real stable source of income through doing YouTube lessons. So that's what made me want to do, maybe want to, I guess, create a career from being a musician on YouTube. Um, and that's what I've been doing for the past year and a half now. Nice. We're not going to have this conversation, we're just going to go and buy some boots instead, guys. Is this the place that's like buy one pair of boots, get four pair free? Or it's something? not. That's uh, I can't remember what it's called. It's like boot country or something like that. But that's further up Broadway. There's I actually went there with my family the first time I came to Nashville, and we took that deal: buy one, get two pairs free. I can't imagine how cheap those boots must be if if you can only buy one pair and then they yeah. give you two free. You're getting three pair of boots for the price of one. Man. I mean, the shop's still there, so it's clearly working for them. <laughs> Oh, here you go, dude. Tell people you yeah. got your visit to America. This is what I wanted to wear on the 4th of July, but they didn't come in time, so. You got the Reba McIntyre signature selection right here. I bet you there's a lot of parallels between the boot world and the guitar world. Probably, yeah. I want to see a Brad Paisley signature line. That, you, don't joke, they actually might have it. They probably do, yeah. Wow, this thing is heavy. <laughs> okay, so, Rhett, what led you to seeking a career as a YouTube musician? Or did you initially start YouTube with the intention of making a, a career? No, I mean, I started my channel in like 2009 and it was just a place to like kind of put videos up and you know, didn't really put any thought behind it. And then in like January of this year, I started to try and take it seriously. I've been playing professionally for about eight years now mm -hmm. and work around here in Nashville a lot in Atlanta where I'm from. and. 
Um, it's been really cool and I wanted to kind of share that story and how I do things, why I do things, how I got into music, the tools that I use in my career and all that kind of stuff. So that's really what led, it, led me Nobody to it. Nobody drinks beer in Nashville. Um, and then I also had uh, a good friend of mine who started a YouTube channel named Rick Beato mm -hmm. uh, about two years ago. I've known Rick for seven years now. I helped him start his channel in July of 2016 and I watched it grow from like 200 subscribers to now 430,000. So that was that's really crazy, inspiring yeah. to see how you could basically generate like a real career around YouTube. Mm. So, yeah. So we were going to get a drone shot, but there are flight restrictions around the Nissan Stadium. Yeah, because so, it's so close to the stadium right here, they've like set up a big geo fence around it so you can't fly your drone. Yeah. Change locations down here by the Capitol. Decided to try and maybe show Ross a part of the city he hasn't seen before. Yeah, I've mostly been downtown for the three weeks that I've been here. Yeah, so. which is cool. Oh, I think we're jaywalking. <laughs> Let's go across some shit. Dude, so, like, what made you decide to start a career in music? Like, is, is being a guitar player something you, like, always wanted to do? My first instrument was uh, the fiddle, and I started playing that when I was nine, and then I watched School of Rock with Jack Black <laughs> when I was 10, <laughs> and then nice, guitar dude. started to take over. And, you know, I kind of felt like this is what I wanted to do, like, as soon as I started playing. So, I never really had any other sort of plan B in mind for what I was going to do career-wise. I always wanted to be, oh yeah, that's your thing, isn't That's it? my thing! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh, I never had, yeah, I never had that plan B, so it was always, this guitar is going to be my thing, I want to play, I want to tour. I want to perform and record. So yeah, there was never any other options for me really. Yeah, it's kind of the same for me too. Like once I found music and I mean I, I went the traditional school route for a little bit, like went to college, but like promptly failed out. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, once that happened, I found music and started a career and went to music school and I've been playing ever since. But it's been about eight years now, but for me, like once I started, there was like, there was no plan B and that's like the whole thing I do on my channel is like the no plan B thing, which I think is really crucial to a career in any creative field or like any self-employed field, whether you're running your own business or being a musician or an artist or you run a blog, like in my experience, having like a backup plan or an idea of like, okay, well I'm gonna do this for a little while if it doesn't work out, then I'll switch to this. Most of the people I know that have done that have ended up switching to their plan B. Mm -hmm. And, you know, not that there's anything wrong with that. It's just, for me, that's not what I wanted to do. If you had to tell somebody who's thinking about getting into music or working in like a creative field, what would you tell them if they're trying to start? We were talking about this a bit in the car, about the kind of mindset you need to have if you want to turn your art, whatever that may be, whether it's painting or music or photography, if you want to turn that into a full-time income, then you need to start learning about things besides your art, basically. You need to be aware of how to develop a good social media presence, how to grow a following, how to basically run a business, really. I mean, it feels weird to me to say I, like, I run a business because, you know, people think of businesses as like you know a shop or I don't know you know what I mean like a, you know right. tangible things whereas like I, I run an online business I sell guitar courses and I do YouTube lessons and that actually is a business for me and I had to learn a whole bunch of other things besides playing guitar to get to the point where I could run a business like editing videos how to talk to a camera how to reach people there's so many other things besides playing guitar that I have to do on a daily basis to ensure that I can continue to make money from music. And I think a big problem that a lot of musicians have who, who want to make money from music is they've sort of been led to believe that making money from your art is a bad thing or like it's a, making money is like a, a dirty thing somehow to turn your art into 
into your living. Um, but that's just like the worst possible mindset to have because, right. and if you if you think that way, then you're never going to be successful, regardless of what creative field you're in. Like you have to accept the fact that you need to be business minded to make money from your art in this day and age. Yeah, I mean, I I completely agree with that. I think if I was going to add something, I would just say you have to understand marketing because really what you are as a musician if you kind of back out and take a 30,000 foot view of it you are like director of marketing and director of sales of your own company yeah. like you are CEO CFO and director of sales and marketing for your own business and I think to me the most successful people that I've seen and worked with in the music business and in the creative field are people that treat themselves like businesses mm -hmm. and there's a lot of facets to that part of it is the creative aspect like learning your craft on guitar like knowing how to handle yourself in certain situations and how to be creative and how to be professional which like your channel is great for but also you know the more personable side of things like are you a good hang are you the type of person that someone wants to spend 15 hours in a van with and then also understanding like your social media game, how to promote yourself in your own unique way. I mean, it's so much more if you want to make a living, like a real adult living in music, you basically have to be a business and treat yourself as such. And that's not a bad thing. That's not like a, like what you were saying. Some people kind of feel like that might be a bad word to treat yourself like a company, but man, that's what you have to do. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to handle your taxes, you know? Yeah. You have yeah. to learn how to handle finances, how to, learn when it's right time to buy gear and when it's right time to save up, you know? Like, yeah. these are all super important things. Definitely. So. Just to touch on that, what you said about being a good hang. Like, I would consider myself to be, I can be shy at times, I'm, I would say I'm an introverted person, so I do feel like I have to make an effort to be someone that's fun to hang around, to be someone that people want to work with. So when we say that you have to be a good hang or you know, good at networking with people like in a bar or at a venue or something. Don't take that as us saying like, you have to be like a social butterfly who can just go and you know, like talk to anyone about anything. I know people like that and I'm envious of them, <laughs> but I'm, I'm definitely, that, that's definitely not me. So I have to make a conscious effort when I'm talking to people to, you know, come off well and not sound like an idiot. So yeah, that's definitely part of it. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're a super introverted or extroverted person like you have to you have to make the effort to, to be good at talking to different people It has holes in it. Yeah. I love that this has like the three saddle telly thing as well. See, I think now we're gonna take a couple of questions that Ross got on his Instagram. Just sort of based on the whole idea we've been talking about today about like, you know, working and building a career as a musician and how to do it, how not to do it. The first one was thoughts and tips on how to improve your social media usage. Yeah. A lot of people say this, but it's true. The main things that you need to be doing as far as your social media goes, whether it's on YouTube or Instagram, um, if you don't use YouTube or Instagram as a musician, you should be using those because those are the two biggest platforms. But uh, when you're uploading to them, you need to have some sort of consistent schedule. I myself, I wouldn't say I have like there aren't set days that I will upload on because I know that I have other things going on that can affect that and I don't want to be the guy that's like, I'm going to upload Monday, Wednesday and Friday at this specific time and then I don't want to find out that I can't do that. But I do make an effort to upload at least every week or every seven to eight days. So you need to be consistent with your uploads and you need to make sure that they're quality uploads as well. Don't make seven videos a week just just to be the guy that makes seven videos a week. If those seven videos 
a week are all very high quality and, and, and good content, then good for you. Uh, I'm jealous if you can do that. <laughs> but uh, I think I would really struggle to come up with uh, seven quality videos every week. So find out what yeah. works best for you, uh, what's actually manageable for you, um, how much time you're really willing and able to spend on your social media game. And why don't you answer for a while and then I'll come back and I'll <laughs> think. So one thing that I like to think about kind of echoing what Ross was just saying is developing your own sort of style and aesthetic in everything that you post. For me, I like to make my videos look a certain way, like a, like they were shot on film, for example, and that runs through everything that I post on Instagram and on YouTube. There's a consistent sort of aesthetic language that flows through so that when people watch my stuff or they see something that I've posted, they kind of immediately know yeah that it's something that I've done. Also, you might wanna think about having a logo designed, whether you do it yourself or have a friend do it or pr hire a professional graphic designer. Something like that shows that you are taking yourself seriously as a business. When you think about big companies like Fender or Gibson or Apple or Coca-Cola, they have all of those elements. They have a specific design language that runs through everything they do. They have noticeable branding logos and everything and you need to think about that as yourself being a business you need to market yourself that way so it can it's really inexpensive to do things like that i mean some of you might even have friends who could are willing to do it for free but having just like a little logo or you know that little youtube watermark i wouldn't say it, it makes a difference between a professional channel and an unprofessional channel whatever that might mean but as someone watching a channel who when I see that they've clearly put an effort into um, working on their brand and they have a logo and it's you know consistent theme um, that tells me that they're they're serious about it and yeah I think it goes a long way it's just a subtle thing that goes a long way really. yeah okay and another interesting question that we got on Instagram was how did you start getting the right gigs did you go and ask people to play with them um, I'll let Rhett answer this first because he's more experienced when it comes to the gigging and touring side of things than I am. Well, I started out like basically when I graduated music school, I immediately started playing in bars around Atlanta, you know, doing the typical bar scene till like three in the morning. And through that, I met a couple people who were doing other things and they started recommending me for gigs and one thing led to another. So. I think rather than telling you, okay, this is how you go out and get a specific gig or whatever, more effective advice would be whatever gig you get hired for, show up prepared, knowing your stuff, show up with reliable gear, it sounds good, know how to play your stuff, but more importantly than all of that is be a good hang, be the type of person that people want to spend time around. Um, that will do more for you and your career than knowing any licks or practicing any solo or anything is be a good hang. If you want to go out and get hired for gigs and for tours, technical ability, gear, look, all that stuff is important. Knowledge of theory, knowing how to play, knowing how to communicate with other musicians, those things are all requirements to play the game, so to speak. But once you get in, the most important thing is to maintain good relationships and just be a good person. Regardless of the gig you have, if you're getting paid for it, uh, let's say you're, you're playing for someone who has a thousand likes on Facebook or you're playing for Keith Urban, you need to be a professional. If you're getting paid, you need to be a professional person in both of those scenarios. Don't underestimate the person that's only got a thousand likes on Facebook and has, you know, 20, 30 people come to the shows that you're playing with because that person could blow up eventually. And if you, if they remember you as, you know, the guitar player or the drummer or the bass player that uh, turned up like two hours late to rehearsals or turned up drunk or didn't bring the right gear and wasn't prepared for things like a string breaking on stage or something like that, they're not going to, they're not going to ask you back. So, you know, when I was studying at uni like I met when I was at <laughs> ah. so when I was studying at uni I met plenty of really talented musicians who had the right attitude and they would turn up on time to rehearsals um, even if it was just for you know a performance at uni like not a paid gig or, or something like that but I also met a lot of people who would you know turn up really late and you know just the, like the worst 
possible thing you can do if you're in a band is turning up and not ha not having learned the songs. Yeah. Like, don't ever do that. Like, you were, <laughs> you just can't do that as a musician. So, um, you know, if you're if you're at college and you're studying music now, you need to be thinking about how you can act professional now, not when you graduate and get a job. Because the people that you're studying with or playing with now, who might not have a big following right now, they could have a big following in the future. So don't underestimate them. And yeah, just be professional when you're in a rehearsal, when you're playing a gig. Uh, it really does go a long way. You can't overstate the importance of that. <laughs> yeah, just don't be a jerk. It's that yeah, easy. Yeah, it's that easy. Just be cool, man. Yeah, that's it. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this little conversation between myself and Rhett. We're here at Novo Guitars in Nashville, their new showroom. Uh, we've just been jamming for a while and uh, chatting and answering your questions. I hope that our answers were beneficial to you and gave you some insight into the things you need to do and the type of person you need to be or become uh, in order to sustain a career in music. And if you have any thoughts on any of the topics that we discussed in this video, please leave a comment below, and um, I'd be, we'd be we'd both be interested to yeah. to hear what you you have to think about the things that we were talking about today. And uh, yeah, to close out, we're just gonna jam on these beautiful guitars and amps. I've got a nice two rock over here, right? Close into a bench, and we're both using Novo guitars. Also, guys, you should definitely go and check out Rhett's channel. I'll link to it in the description below. His videos are amazing. Honestly, the uh, videography is unlike any other guitar channel that I've seen on YouTube. He's got drone shots, he's got nice lighting. It's, it's all there. Go and check it out for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, my channel is basically kind of the lens through which I view guitar and what I do for a living. So it's vlogging when I'm on the road, it's gear demo stuff, talking about the gear that I play and how I use it. Um, there's some tick. There's some technique stuff in there as well. And yeah, I just try and do something a little bit different than some of the other guitar channels that are out there. Yeah, so. and he's doing a great job of it. So definitely go and subscribe to Rhett's channel. And thank you once again for watching this video. And I will see you in the next one. Yeah.